Soviet disc detected. To play the Allied missions, please insert the Allied disc. Hello everyone, I'm a broken robot. When it comes to first world problems, nothing is as universal as planning outfits and retrofitting your personal wardrobe to fit your unique style and personality. In recent years, things like fast fashion, Shein, and generic branded clothing has fallen in popularity for multiple reasons, leading to an exciting revival in thrifting for secondhand apparel around the mid-2010s. However, in the past few years, both major chain thrift stores and mom and pop thrift stores to a lesser degree have changed in many ways alongside their consumer base for better and well, mostly for worse. It's kind of ironic that 10 years ago people saw thrift stores like Goodwill and Savers as a dumping ground for unwanted clothing and goods that only low class Americans shopped at out of necessity to today in 2024 where thrift stores are growing nationwide and thrifting is popular among all kinds of demographics and age groups. As a robot that always enjoyed the thrill of the hunt that came with a weekly trip to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army, I alongside many others have begun to notice a depressing shift in both thrift store chains and the customer base that is bit by bit ruining the point of thrift stores in the first place. But before we can discuss the industry and consumer trends, let's briefly explain how we got here in the first place. Buying and selling secondhand goods is as old as human civilization itself. Since the dawn of time, people have traded and sold used goods for a multitude of reasons. In the olden days, these goods consisted of things like farm equipment, jewelry, and towards the end of the 19th century, clothing began to become a popular item to be peddled secondhand. It's important to realize that back in the day, clothing wasn't meant to last just a few years, let alone a few weeks as many have observed with Sheen and other fast fashion products. Things like jackets, undershirts, and pants were handmade by tailors and were built to last, with traditional clothing back in the day having longer lifespans than shoes or even hats. Clothing was far more expensive, which forced many impoverished Americans living in the South to utilize less than functional and rather unfashionable outfits. During the 1880s, many beggars would go door to door asking for discarded and unwanted clothing, who would then turn around and sell these items to other low class Americans, providing good quality clothing at half the price and giving many groups like Jewish, Black, and Native Americans that had trouble finding work during this time period an opportunity to make a living a far cry from the Depop resellers we see today. The first major thrift store chain in America was the Salvation Army, originally getting their start in London, England in 1865. By the 1890s, the Salvation Army, along with other thrift store groups, began to sprout inside the densely populated cities, banking off the impoverished masses of European immigrants that were flooding into cities like New York, Boston, and Baltimore. Most of these early thrift stores utilized middlemen to obtain goods for their shops. Chains like the Salvation Army would employ homeless men giving them a room, two meals a day, and a bed if they would venture out into the city and countryside scavenging for goods that were either given or donated to these stores. While clothing was still a major facet of thrifting, furniture, cookingware, and books became a major keystone for thrift store sales, as many of these goods were expensive to buy new. Jumping ahead to the 1970s, chains like Goodwill, Savers, and Habitat for Humanity had grown nationwide and every town in America had at least one or two thrift stores. No longer using hired beggars to acquire goods for their shops, chains like Goodwill and Savers relied solely on donations from individuals in the community. While many of these larger thrift store chains on paper are charities that do employ disenfranchised Americans and provide financial support to a wide variety of charities, it shouldn't be ignored that these organizations are profit-driven and will and have cut corners in the name of increasing corporate profits. This might be a controversial opinion since these organizations fund and run charities, but I think it goes against thrifting's bottom line to increase prices based on demand. Today in 2024, according to Capital One Shopping, thrifting is a $39 billion industry and makes up a whopping 9% of the US retail market. In fact, despite the economic downturn of the pandemic, Thrifting grew rapidly between 2020 through 2023. Now, some of you in the audience may be wondering what's wrong with thrift store chains. Sure, some of the larger chains might not be as charitable as they may claim to be, but they supply goods at an affordable price for lower class Americans and allow people to ethically discard unwanted items. Well, it's actually shifts in thrifting consumer demographics that has led thrift store chains to become more profit driven and cutthroat these days. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, 10 years ago you'd be labeled as a broke boy if you were caught buying clothes at a thrift store, 
where now in 2024 thrift stores are considered a fun hangout location for teens and adults alike. In the mid-2010s, consumers became more aware of the wastefulness of the fast fashion industry, and vintage looks alongside different fashion aesthetics became popular with the rise of TikTok. In the mid and late 2010s, most big box brands would slap their own logo on a t-shirt and call it a day, charging you $40, which became stale very quickly. Alt girls and e-boys were rushing to their local goodwills to scavenge the remains of your late grandfather's wardrobe. Before the internet, clothing companies had the luxury of fads lasting longer than a few weeks, and clothing styles lasting about 5 to 10 years on average. However, today things have never changed so often and so rapidly, with dozens of new fashion trends, styles, and aesthetics rising and falling and rising again within a single year. Around 2019, there was a huge demand for vintage jeans and patterned t-shirts, and as people found themselves out of work due to, uh, global events, a rise in the controversial reseller market took place across America, and things like social media and the growing popularity of vintage clothing further heightened this mass growth of online reselling for better and for worse. At first it was pretty simple. People would go to Goodwill, pick out clothing they found interesting or thought others would find desirable, and sell it on eBay or other secondhand apparel sites. As more and more wannabe influencers and online entrepreneurs jumped on the bandwagon, it quickly expanded to things like books, electronics, and basically anything else you can find in thrift stores. If you could buy low and sell high, it became a target of resellers. This is where thrift stores took a dramatic turn in response to this massive influx of customers and speculated lost profits. While this boost in sales helped thrifting expand nationwide, companies took notes of these consumer trends, and many companies like Goodwill and Savers were well aware of resellers using their locations to acquire potential products. Back in 2020, you could get most clothing items for less than a few dollars, whereas now in 2024 in some states it's on average about 10 to 12 dollars. And some could say that for all other goods sold in major thrift chains, prices have increased rapidly. CDs went from just 99 cents to $3 on average, and children's toys went from just a few dollars to sometimes as much as $20 on average. Some online claim that thrift store chains are the ones at fault, purposely raising prices in response to the growing popularity of thrifting and reselling. But many forget that as I mentioned earlier, major thrift chain stores were always for profits to fund the charities that they are attached to. These larger chains use the mask of charity to keep a steady flow of free goods into their stores to be labeled and resold. Addressing the elephant in the room, I also understand that these thrift stores are given these items for free and then sell them for profit, so many online, including myself, do think it's a bit taboo that many of these major thrift store chains have been increasing their prices nationwide, when most Americans living below the poverty line desperately need to use these thrift stores as a lifeline for needed items. Consumer trends have also led chains like Goodwill to no longer sell goods solely in physical locations. Many within the business will claim that this was to take advantage of online sales, but in reality it's a tactic of setting aside the handful of valuable goods that are donated, and then go on to sell it for profit online. Since these organizations are charities, I could understand the drive to milk items for all they're worth, but this goes against many of these organizations' bottom lines. Quick story time. One of the most memorable stories I have with one of my good friends is that one day his mother, on a complete whim, decided to donate his Sega Genesis to the local thrift store, and we to this day still think about it considering that someone out there found a game console and games for likely less than $10. Well, things like that don't really happen anymore. When a game console, jewelry, electronics, or even just valuable pieces of furniture are donated by generous or oblivious people, Goodwill and many other major chains set aside the goods for online sales, essentially leaving the leftovers to actually go on store shelves and be bought by the average Joes and needy Americans they once advertised to. Many other major thrift store chains copied this tactic and it's led to further increases in prices. I visited a local thrift store to prepare for this video and it honestly shows. While shelves are still stocked with a wide variety of goods, it's nothing to write home about with some goods being unwanted, sometimes broken, or straight up garbage. I recognize that these businesses need to make money to keep the lights on, but considering that chains like Goodwill made $6.1 billion in profit, according to their corporate website in 2023, it's hard to turn a blind eye, even if 79% of it goes to charity. Sure, to be fair, these organizations do still focus on charity at its core, 
but that extra surplus profit has to go somewhere and it's not back out into the community. Many major thrift chains essentially nerf their physical locations, putting big ticket items on websites and overpricing goods that were sold for less than a dollar just a few years ago. In response to this, the resellers and thrifting fans got even more cutthroat. As the pandemic came to an end and most people that hopped on the bandwagon realized that thrifting for profit wasn't a good long-term business model, thrift stores nationwide were picked over daily by dozens of resellers, taking the items of value and leaving what was left for the others. While some may argue that the early bird gets the worm, this rise of opportunistic resellers has ruined thrift stores for needy Americans that relied on the low prices and useful goods to sustain their lifestyles. As thrift store prices continue to rise, some question if the current thrift market, even outside secondhand apparel, is even viable for the long term. As sites like Depop and eBay continue to grow, the secondhand apparel market and thrift stores try to squeeze every dollar out of non-clothing items. Thrift stores have lost their charm, and more than often you'll leave empty-handed. Before I go any further, I'd like to make a few things very clear. I'm not against thrifting for profit. If you like to resell online, then good for you. But it shouldn't be ignored that the growing industry of independent resellers has begun to price people out of secondhand goods. Additionally, I have no problem with thrifting. I, as a robot that doesn't need clothes, will make weekly trips to Goodwill in search of CDs and books that pique my interest. I just think that it's kind of shady that so many major thrift stores that were once bastions of hope and deals for less affable Americans now focus on pricing things as most effectively as possible to make profit for both their charities and for their bottom line. In 2024, the thrifting landscape is weird to say the least. Donated goods are either scalped for online profits by resellers, while the less desirable goods are left to rot on store shelves, and thrifting consumer changes have priced out the original market base for thrift stores and led to an overall price hike for everyone. While it would be unfair to claim that traditional thrifting is dead, it's become obvious for all that thrifting isn't what it used to be. Thrift stores and those that seek to resell are in a constant battle with each other to get the most bang for their buck, and in the fallout, low-class Americans that relied on thrift stores are gradually being priced out. But what do you guys think? This video took a lot of boots-on-the-ground research, and even now as I'm recording this video, I have mixed feelings about both the recent trends in chain thrift stores and thrifting for profit in general. Do you guys think that the thrift store chains are the problem? Or was it the sudden and rapid rise of thrifting for profit that started this chain reaction? I'd be more than happy to discuss it in the comments down below. But more than anything, I'm so happy to have each and every one of you in my audience today. You guys make the Broken Robot Show possible, and I can't thank you guys enough for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something new. If you like what you see, feel free to hit the like button. That way I know you guys want more videos and it helps me out personally in the YouTube algorithm. So hey, thanks a bunch. Feel free to subscribe and join the Robot Factory today. We cover everything from video games to social trends to even history and philosophy here on the show. So there's always something for everyone here. I hope you all have a great day, donate to your small town mom and pop thrift stores, and stay cool.